Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so here we go. We're going to take a look at our Module 2, Multiple Choice, and Open Ended. Okay, so here we go. Um, circle the response, the circle the response that best answers the question. Which expression can be used to determine the nth term in the pattern below? So here we have a pattern, okay? 23, 28, 33, 38, 43. What do you notice is happening? Well, it's getting larger, okay? If it's getting bigger, you're either going to be adding or multiplying. So, um, from 23 to 28, I am adding 5. From 28 to 33, I am adding 5. And you're noticing that I'm adding 5 each time. Okay? So there's two ways to do this. You can look for the one down here that has a, like a, a 5, okay, going up. So, like, you have the negative 5, which is going down 5, down 5. You're looking for the number that's in front of your variable. That's your slope. So the only one that really sticks out to us is the 5n plus 18. Now, double check, what you can do is make n equal 1. If I pull and go 1 in for n, 5 times 1 is 5, plus 18 is 23. If I plug in a 2 for n, 2 times 5 is 10, plus 18 is 28. I know I'm good. Okay, cool. Number 2, determine uh, for each of the following graphs which are functions and which ones are not functions. In order to be a function, it needs to pass the VLT, the vertical line test. So... If I draw a line straight up and down, and never hits more than one point, that passes. This is a function. Okay? This is okay, too. Function. Okay? Function. But if you look at part D, if I draw a line straight up and down here, it hits there and there. It hits two points. So this is not a function. Okay, you don't want to hit more than one point. Cool. The elements of a function of x are 1, 3, 5, 3, and 7, 2. What's the domain? Domain is all your x values. Okay, um, so if I'm looking over here, I've got, this is an x, y, x, y, x, y, 1, 5, 7. Boom. Please be aware that I could easily ask you on the test, what is the range? The range is all the y values. Okay. Which of the following relations describes a function? All right, I can't have an x value twice that goes to two separate things. All right, so, uh, sorry, if I, so for a function, I don't want that. Here, you notice how I have 9 to 3 and 9 to 0? So I have repeating x values. That is not a function. Uh, 5 to negative 3, 5 to 3, not a function. Um, this one's looking good, 16, 9, 6, negative 5. That's for a function. Just to double check, 12, 16, 12, 9, no good, okay? So you're looking for the one that does not repeat, does not repeat x values. All right. Which of the following linear equations corresponds to the table shown below? So there's different ways to do this, um, 0, 2, 2, 8. When you see 0, 2, that tells me that my y-intercept, because your y-intercepts when x equals 0, is positive 2. So right away, if you know that, I know I'm down to these two. Well, um, you can do a number of things here. I could come over here and plug a 2 in for x. So like 3 times 2 gives me 6, plus 2 is 8. Is that the y value over here? Very good. You could do slope formula if your heart really truly desired. Um, I'm always going to encourage you guys to use the test to your advantage to make it easier for you. Okay. All right. Sketch the following graphs with the appropriate y-intercept and slope. All right, so y equals mx plus b. So that's your b, negative 2. So I'm going to go down 2 and plot a point. That's my starting point. That's where I begin. The slope is the m, what's in front of your x. Down 3, 1, 2, 3, over 1. Draw your line. Make sure you have arrows on it. You're all set. Negative uh, slope means it's falling, so you're in good shape. A little bit different over here. Please note that my slope is positive, so my line should be rising. Okay, the y-intercept in this one is 2, so I'm going to go up 2, plot a point. Uh, my slope is 1 third, up 1 over 3. Cool. And then I'm just going to go right across, okay, 
you have a fraction, a number less than one, uh, typically your lines don't rise as fast. If you have a whole number like negative three, your lines do get steeper. Just something to think about. Okay? You may also use your y equals function on your graphing calculator if you'd like, where I could just go y equals, type in negative three x minus two, and then you can graph it because, oops, sorry, my zoom's all out of whack there. Because um, most likely it's going to be multiple choice questions, so you can use that to your advantage. All right. Um, what is the slope of a line that passes through the following points? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to give you this formula as you were given it on the keystone. Okay. So um, here's your x1, y1, x2, y2. Plug stuff in over here. I've got 2 minus negative 7 divided by 5 minus 1. Please be careful about your negatives because minus and negative becomes plus. And then 5 minus 1 is 4. So 9 over 4, positive slope. Look to reduce. Okay? Um, because most likely you're going to have to reduce at some point. That's a, that's a look. That's 2. And that's reduce because I know someone's going to say I can't write. And you are absolutely right because I am pretty awful at my handwriting. Uh, there we go. Okay. A linear function has a y-intercept of negative 9 and a slope of 4. What's the equation of a line? Guys, this is the easiest question in the world. Um, slope is m. y-intercept is b. So I'm just plugging stuff in here. y equals 4x minus 9. Uh, that's all she wrote. You win. Okay. Yes, it's that simple. All right, number nine, the stem and leaf plot to the left shows the, the per capita GNP of West, Western Africa. What is the mean, median, and mode? All right, well, mean, okay, you add all up, and you divide by how many, the total number. All right, so um, bear with me here. Okay, I've got, well, first off, hopefully you guys are cool with this. When you have a stem and leaf plot, it's 1 slash 80, that's 180, okay? Plus 240, plus 260, plus 270, plus 310, plus 330, plus 360, plus 370, plus 390, okay? Plus 410, plus 480, plus 500, plus 710, plus 730, plus 890. All right, so what do I got here? Uh, 4, 8, 12, 13, 15 numbers. So I'm going to do 6,430 divided by 15. So my mean is 428.67, we'll round in the nearest hundredth. All right, as far as my mode, or actually we'll go median next, mean, median, mode. All right, median's the one in the middle. All right, so if I have 15 numbers, all right, because we talked about total 15 numbers, that means the middle number is seven from the back, seven from the front, so the eighth number. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 370. All right, guys, one little thing, if for some reason this number was even, you would find the two numbers in the middle and divide by two. You'd add them together and divide by two, all right? Lastly, mode, which is one of my favorites because it's so simple. Uh, what number over here occurs the most often? Um, well, try as I might, if I look through all of these, no number repeats. It's okay to have no mode. All right, so um, we're good there. All right, there's no number that's repeated. So, like, for example, if there was a 310 and another 10 there, that'd be a second one. Okay? All right, these are your big three. Pretty simple. Um, easy to get mixed up. Just be careful. Okay? What percent of the data represented by the box and whisker plot are below 12? All right, so here's my box and whisker plot. This is one of the easiest things ever, but you do have to know what you're talking about. Each part of a box and whisker plot is worth 25%. Okay, so the first whisker, the first part of the box, the second part of the box, and the last whisker. So when it says what's below 12, so here's 12. Below it would be 25% and 25%, so a grand total of. 50%. Like I said, super easy, um, even though 
this might not look like each thing's 25%. That's the reason why it's called, called a box and whisker plot to show where the data is located at. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Last two here. Um, examine the following data set. Determine the mean, median, mode, and range. All right. So, um, again, I know you guys know this, but to give you another example. All right. So I've got my mean. Uh, 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 11 plus 23 plus 23 plus 23 plus 23 plus 23. All right, so it's 141. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 numbers. Divide that by 11. 12.81 or 12.82. Cool. Um, median. Is the one in the middle, so it's going to be the sixth one, conveniently enough. There's my 11. Your mode. I have five threes, I have five 23s. So I can actually have two modes, three and 23. If the same number repeats twice, you're good to go. And lastly, um, range. Well, range is high minus low, so you're looking at 23 minus 3, so my range is 20. Cool. All right. Lastly here, Artie has a book of short stories. There are six sci-fi, four adventure, three historical, and two sports. He selects one short story at random. What's the probability that the story Artie selects is either a sports story or a sci-fi story? How many sports stories are there? Two. How many sci-fi stories are there? Six. So six and two. And you want over the total amount. Okay, so every probability is what you want over total. All right, um, 6 plus 4, 10, 13, 15. So you're looking at 8 over 15. All right, so there's a few different ways to write out your answer, and I just want to show this to you real quick. 8 divided by 15 is 0.53. Okay. Um, so you could leave it like that, you could call it, you could leave your answer like that, like that, or you could say 53%. We're talking about probability, you typically talk about percent. Um, so, good job everybody, keep up the good work, um, I'll be back with part two of the video for the open-ended. As always, keep up the good work and good luck.